The other agency by which Islam spread, both in North Africa and in Sub-Saharan Africa, was through the establishment of Islamic ideological movements. And the first Islamic ideological movement which had impact not only in Africa, but also in the Iberian Peninsula was the Al Mujah Al Murabitun. The Murabitun movement really are the people of the Ribat. Now, this concept of a Ribat may sound very strange to modern day Americans, but medieval Christians had no problem with this concept because the Knight Templars fit the mold very well. The Ribat is a seminary, if you can imagine that today, which is very striking for an American, seminary cum military academy. But you see, if you look at the mediv medieval world, the Knight Templars, they knew their Catholic catechism. They were very committed to Catholicism, but they were also warriors. You see what I'm saying? The Knight Templars. The Murabithun were, uh, this was a movement, but the Ribat and the Murabithun idea existed in Islam because the Murabithun were the border guards defending the frontiers of Islam uh, from alien intrusion, and they were supposed to know the religion, and they were supposed to know how to fight to defend the religion. So they were the Murabithun. And of course, uh, a movement would call itself the Al-Murabithun. You, you read them in the anglicized form, Al-Murabits. You know, in English, we read them as Muravits, M-O-R-A-V-I-D-S, Muravits. But the Al-Murabithun would play an important role in the spread of Islam south of the Sahara. Because what happened really is that one of the Barba kings went on a pilgrimage to Mecca. And on his way back in what is now called Algeria, he, ha he asked one of the sheikhs whether he would accompany him back to his people. Because he was from the Barba tribal group called Sanhaja. The Sanhaja Berber group. You have the Mesufa, the Godala, the Lemtuna, and other different groups. But he came out of the Sanhaja group. Now, he wanted a mentor and a teacher for his people so that they will have correct understanding of Islam. This person who was approached said, well, I cannot go with you, but I have a disciple called Abdullah ibn Yasin. And Abdullah ibn Yasin can come with you and he can teach your people. Now, Abdullah ibn Yasin was a very puritanical fella. So when he came to these Barba people, he was so tough and strict in his understanding and interpretation of Islam that the Sanhaja people chased him out of town. <laughs> now, he went to, if you look at the map of Africa, you will see that, uh, there's just a rough map here. You have, the Senegalese are in that side of the wall here. There's the river here. Now, all this part, Morocco, Mauritania, part of Algeria, this became a kingdom in this area, big kingdom. Now, what is happening when, when he came down, Abdullah ibn Yasin, to preach to the Sanghaja people, and they chased him out of town, he went to the mouth of what is now called the Senegal River, which separated the Berbers from the sub-Saharan uh, African groups. And he established a ribad. And that ribad 
would be the foundation for the Murabitun movement because they recruited all the able-bodied young men uh, from these tribal groups and they constituted his army. And he, with that army, he was able to conquer all of North Africa going all the way into Spain and the Murabitun invasion of Spain, which you read about. Now, what is very interesting about this is the fact that through the Al Murabitun movement, uh, you have greater Islamization of the North African and Sub Saharans who are exposed to the region. So many of these North Africans and Sub Saharan Africans became more exposed to Islam. But the point that needs to be emphasized here really is like all revolutionary movements, after a few generations, some of them don't even last a few generations, the revolution collapsed. We see that in the Soviet Union. It didn't last 70 years. I mean, you know, like, uh, uh, the, I mean, it lasted 70 years, but it didn't last 80, 100 years. I mean, from 1917 to 1989, it collapsed. Communism collapsed. So the same thing happened with all movements, uh, human movements, at least what we know in history. They may last, some of them may last for 100 years, but eventually they collapse and uh, replaced by other movements. Now, this is precisely what happened to the Murabitun movement. The Murabitun movement, uh, became dominant in North Africa and extended itself into Spain. But 